Hello, hello, hello. Today is August 4, 2022. I'm going to cover with you the solutions of problem 150. The cube with the eight charges. It is not as easy as many of you may have thought. I thought it would be appropriate for me, something that I have never done before, that before I cover this, I play for you my violin. So here is the problem. Here is the cube with eight charges Q at each corner. About 80% of A answers were correct. About 40% of both A and B answers were correct. But only about 10% of the people had A, B and C correct. C was clearly the cliffhanger. Let's go over some basics, SI units, that we're all on the same page. Electric potential is in volts, charge is in coulombs, electric potential energy is in joules. Epsilon zero shows up in Coulomb's law. You can look up what epsilon zero is. But since we always deal with 1 over 4 pi epsilon zero, which we call K, that is then 8.99 times 10 to the 9. We normally use 9 times 10 to the 9. So this is Coulomb's law. The force between two charges Q1 and Q2 is this K divided by R squared. R is the separation between them. Electric potential in volts at point P is defined as the work I have to do to move charge Q from infinity to P, but we have to divide that by Q. So joules divided by charge then is volts. Let there be a charge Q at point A. What is the electric potential a distance D from A? It's the work I have to do to move a charge Q from infinity to A divided by Q. So it is K times capital Q divided by D. The total energy in joules of a configuration of charges is the work I have to do to build that configuration. Question A. Electric potential at the center of the cube. The distance between each charge and the center is D. And D is L square root, square root 3 divided by 2. L is the distance between the side of the cube. So this is L and this is L. So you can easily figure out that D is L square root 3 divided by 2. Now potentials are scalars, scalars, thus you simply end up all the potential energies at the center. We had 8, and so 8 times kq divided by d is then 16, qk divided by l square root 3. That was easy. 80% answers were correct. V at the corner is a little bit more difficult. Because if you look at the corner, look at this corner, this charge is a distance L from this. This charge is also a distance L. And this charge is also a distance L. But this charge is the distance L square root 2. This charge is distance L square root 2. And then there is of course this charge from here to there, which is different again. So you're dealing with 
three values of D, D1, D2, and D3. In three cases, we deal with D2. In three cases, we deal with D1, and only in one case do we deal with D3. Here are the values for D1, D2, and D3, and so this is then the answer. It's about 5.70 times k times q divided by l. Now, what comes is very important. This does not include the contribution from the point charge located at the corner under consideration. If that point had zero size, its contribution to the potential right at that corner would be infinite. So the potentials that we have calculated at the corners is then the following. We take this Q out, we remove it, and then we calculate if what the potential is the result of the other seven charges. We take this one out, and then we calculate what the potential here is as the result of the other seven charges. That's how we define the potential at the corners. Now comes question C, the most difficult of all. The collection of point charges will be the sum of many terms. One term for each possible pairing of charges in the system. So if you give the charges numbers, it is the work you have to do to put one and two in place. But then you have to add number three, one and three. And the work you have to do to put two and three in place, one and four, two and four, three and four, and so on. A huge number of terms. Now we know how to express these W's in terms of charges and charge separations. Consider the pairing of charge I with charge J. They are separated by a distance D of IJ. So the work to put I and J in place is K times QI, QJ divided by DIJ. I can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And J can be 1, point, one two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice I and J cannot be the same. But WI2 is the same as W2I. And W52 is the same as W25, etc. Note that although we have imagined constructing the system in a particular charge-by-charge charge order, the result for the potential energy of the configuration depends only on the final configuration and not on the order in which the charges were brought in place. That's why we add all these W's. For our cube, the quantity QV corner gives the sum of the potential energy terms of seven pairings in all. All of those pairings that involve one particular charge. In other words, the quantity H times QV corner thus adds up to the total potential energy of the configuration. But it counts all pairs twice. And thus, the total amount of energy, for me to put it together, is half of this value. It is 4 QV corner, and that's this number. If some of you have problems with the factor of 2, place a charge Q at A and at B, a distance D apart. The potential at A, due to the charge at B, is k q squared divided by d. And the potential at b 
due to the charge as A is the same. See the similar reasoning that we used above for the corners of the cube. Yet the total energy needed to build this conformation is not 2k q squared divided by d, but it is only kq squared divided by t. So here you see the factor of t, of 2. And if you made a triangle, equilateral triangle with three charges, you can conclude exactly the same. You also see that factor of 2. Now, Carl Hansen, who obviously has all his answers correct, because he is Carl Hansen, he calculates step by step the work needed to assemble the charges. So he never deals with this factor of two, which I did. He just simply builds it up. Builds it up. He numbers the charges in the rear plane, one, two, three, four, and in the front plane, five, six, seven, eight. And he's now going to put them in place. And I suggest you read the text. It's no need for me to read it. Again, he deals with three distances, L, L square root 2 and L square root 3. And then keep going. This is how he puts the charges together. So he has 12 cases. The distance is L apart. 12 cases where the distance is L divided by square root 2 apart. And 4 cases where the charges are L divided by the square root of 3 apart. So he adds this now, and he simplifies this, <laughs> and then he puts back in the kq squared divided by l, and then you get this, 36 plus 18 square root 2 plus 4 square root 3, all that divided by 3 times this factor, and what does he find? 22.8 q squared divided by L. And what did I find? 22.8 times k q squared divided by L. So the difference between the two messages, my message is clearly shorter, is that you need that insight that the total energy to put it together is not 8 QV, V being the potential at the corners, but it's half that. He doesn't have that problem because he simply builds it up step by step. All right then, this was not the easiest problem in the world because the last question was the cliffhanger. But yet, it certainly was a high school problem. Uh, not too many of you in high school, though, would have been able to do this. And if you couldn't do it, never forget, we'll be friends, that's a given, that's the strongest conservation law in physics, and that will never change. <laughs>